Hey, I'm Miss Mayhew. Hey everyone, and I'm Miss Lopez. And in this video, we are going to go over with you the guidelines and template for writing inquiry labs in AP Biology. Let's get started. So the first part of writing a lab is going to be the question. So the question is going to give you an idea of what is being tested. Okay, it's set up in such a way that the independent and dependent variables are clearly defined. So we've given you a template example so that you can have an idea of how to get the points that you need from an FRQ like this in the least amount of words. So you might say something along the lines of how does blank respond or change in response to blank. What we're going to put in these blanks is you're going to talk about how does the dependent variable change in response to the independent variable. Right, so we have the question set up like this to make writing your hypothesis, which is the next section, very easy. Your hypothesis takes your independent and dependent variable and tries to predict what the relationship um, between these two concepts is going to be. Now, you can write it as an if-then statement, just like you've done in previous years. We really would prefer you didn't, but you're still going to get points for writing your hypothesis in that format. Um, the key thing about the hypothesis is focusing on the effect between your independent variable and your dependent variable. Now, when you make this prediction, you can either say that it that one is going to cause an increase or decrease. Um, maybe you want to use the words promote or inhibit. It's even okay to make your hypothesis um, predicting that there's going to be no effect on the dependent variable. So the next thing that we're going to go over is the experimental setup. Now, the first thing I want to point out is that this should be in paragraph form. You cannot sit there and list the steps that you would do um, like you might have done in other classes. You won't get points for using a bulleted list on an FRQ. So you are going to identify the conditions of the control. Now, one thing I want to point out about the control is this is going to be your baseline for comparing your normal. So you're gonna identify what you're comparing your experimental data to. You are going to list at least two factors that are gonna remain constant. That means in both your experimental and your control setup, you're going to have this thing constant. You need at least two of those. You're also going to tell um, the readers how you're going to manipulate the independent variable. So what are you going to change in order to see and measure the response? Also, you obviously have to tell how you're going to measure the response um, and how you're going to measure that change in the dependent variable. Now, the last thing is the easiest point that you shouldn't ever, ever, ever miss and that is multiple trials. This is an easy point that you should never give up on an FRQ. All right, so the next portion is the data. Now, with the data, you're looking at showing the graphs um, or including numbers. This is going to be quantifiable, and you wanna make sure that your independent variable and your dependent variable, in other words, what you're testing, and what you're measuring are clearly seen on this table. Um, and you also wanna make sure you account for all your data points. So um, to help you with this portion, we've come up with uh, an acronym, SAD, S-A-D, which I know is a terrible acronym, but hey, you know, go roll, roll with it. Um, and SAD stands for scale, which means did you use up as much of the graph or grid paper as possible? And did you do it uh, correctly? A stands for axes. Did you label your X and your Y axis? And then D stands for data. Did you account for all your data points? 
So S-A-D, SAD, as a way to help you remember what's needed for the data portion of your lab reports or your FRQs. Okay, the last section is your conclusion. And your conclusion is broken up into three different sections. The first section is your claim. Now, it's a little confusing sometimes for students, but the way that I like to help them remember, your claim takes that hypothesis and there's no longer a question of if or will it. It's no longer a prediction. At this point, you are making a definitive statement the independent variable does affect the dependent variable or your independent variable is is not affecting your dependent variable so at this point you are removing any doubt any question and making a solid claim it's going to sound a lot like your hypothesis but in your hypothesis it's more of a question will it happen does it affect your claim is saying, yes, it does, or no, it doesn't. Your evidence. Your evidence section must be supported by the data that you have in your graph or table, and it's gotta be measurable. You've gotta be able to back it up with like 20% more or three times more likely. You're gonna have quantitative evidence for the data and then on the reasoning part, this is where a lot of students miss out of points and what keeps, this is what differentiates a five from a four. So if you're sitting there thinking, right, I really want to get a good grade on this, on this AP exam or I want to get a good grade in this class, this right here is the deal breaker between an A and a B. And it's the word explain. So where you have anything that says explain, how your data supports the claim or explain something or explain anything, we're telling students, we're trying, to get, we're trying to get as many of you guys to get that A as possible. So what we're telling students is anytime you see the word explain, make sure you circle it, highlight it, underline it, do something, and know that you've got to make three idea connections whenever you're asked to explain something. So it's not gonna be a quick one word answer. And it's not gonna be one sentence. It may be three or four sentences. And you've gotta make connections based on what we're learning in the content. So that explain how your data supports the data. Again, that reasoning part is always where students lose out on lab reports, lose out on, FR, on FRQs on the AP exam, and even writing FRQs. So try to make three idea connections, and we're definitely gonna practice this with you as we go through the year, and as we practice FRQs, and as we go through and grade FRQs, we're gonna help you with this idea of how do I make those three connections. So on the actual AP exam, where you can expect to see this information being used will be in some of your multiple choice questions. Um, there might be a lab that they've shown you and they might ask you to identify certain parts. So it could be a multiple choice question. Okay, you will definitely see it on your FRQ question number one. That is going to be worth 10 points. Okay, just a reminder, your FRQs are worth half of your score for the AP exam. So if you have 10 points coming from question one that are gonna be lab design like this, it's probably pretty important. You will also see it on question number three. That is going to be four points of your FRQ total. All right, so keep this page bookmarked. We're hoping that it helps you in the future. You're gonna see it a lot in our course. You're gonna see us pulling it up a lot to help you guys, especially at the beginning. We'll be writing labs, writing FRQs, designing labs all year long. And so this will be a really powerful piece to make sure that you guys know exactly what we are looking for whenever we're grading these FRQs, whenever we're grading your lab reports, exactly what is needed so that you can get top score. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.